girl Honey, and today I'm gonna be eating Vietnamese food, so let's get started. Here I have charbroiled pork pho. Can you guys try to say it? Here is charbroiled pork pho, charbroiled pork rice, egg rolls, and shrimp fried rice. So let's dig in because I'm so hungry. So here I put some jalapenos and mung bean sprouts, and you guys told me that this was Vietnamese basil, and I always thought it was mint leaves, but I don't really like putting those in, so I'm gonna. Just leave that here, and I don't really like putting lime in my pho either. So before I put in the hoisin sauce and sriracha for the taste, I'm gonna try the soup first. Mmm, yummy. I wanted to venture out today and try something new because usually when I get pho, I get the rare steak and tendon pho, but I got the charbroiled pork pho. The reason being is because, so I don't know if you guys know the Food Ranger, AKA Trevor James, but he's been eating charbroiled pork stuff in Vietnam and it looked so amazing and delicious. So I wanted to try it and venture out and try something new. So that's why I got the charbroiled pork, charbroiled pork pho and charbroiled pork rice and this shrimp fried thing just to try something new. So let's dig in. Did I already do that? Oh, I did. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started. So I'm gonna first eat the egg rolls. I love my egg rolls. And then I have lettuce here, which I'm gonna slice it in half. And then put my egg roll here and some vermicelli. Ding! Is that too much? Eat. And some carrots. Roll it up. Dip it in my fish sauce. Mmm. Mmm. I love egg rolls. And I love fish sauce too. Forgot to put some in my pho. I love cilantro. Mm. Oh, did you guys notice the bee on top? I got this from a honey bee. And let me show you guys. This is so cool. And lights up, isn't it so cute? I'm wearing the bee earrings. Love it! Do you guys know what this is? This is sliced onions with hoisin sauce and sriracha. And oh my gosh, this is like the best with Vietnamese food. If you guys go to a Vietnamese restaurant, you guys have to ask for this and eat it with your food. But make sure you're not with your boyfriend or your girlfriend because your breath is gonna smell like onions and you don't want that. Let's try this. Mmm. Yes. Mmm. Mmm. I love this jasmine rice. You could taste the charriness of the pork. Why have I never tried this before? It's so delicious. It's so yummy. Mm. And I'm gonna put some sriracha in my fried rice. Mm. Let's try this fried shrimp thing. Mmm, there's like shredded shrimp in here. Mm. The outside is a little bit too hard. It's 
hard to chew a little bit. But the inside is really delicious. It tastes like fish cakes. Shrimp fish cake. And then this is the egg kishi. Kish. Mmm. Yum. Shrimp fried rice. With my big old trusty spoon. Yummy. Yummy in my tummy. Let's try the pho. Pick up some pork and then my noodles. Mmm. Mmm. It reminds me of brugogi, but a Vietnamese brugogi. It has that like cilantro, real herby taste to it. It's really good though. Yum. I've been missing out, you guys. I really, really want to visit Vietnam because I love Vietnamese food. And I heard the Vietnamese street food is really good. So I cannot wait to go visit. I don't know if you guys know who the food ranger is, but he used to do mostly food in China. But... Now he's been doing other countries as well, and I love his show. Go check out his channel. Tai hao le. He goes like, Tai hao le. It's so cute. Love his channel. I'm starting to sweat a little. Using this trusty old fan my honey bee gave me. Thank you, Stephanie. This is seriously saving my mukbang life. And look, there's bees on it. Let my eyelashes dry too. <laughs> oh, I think you're supposed to dip this in fish sauce, actually. It came with the fish sauce. So let's try it. Mmm. Ten times better. Oh my gosh. Mm. Yummy. I'm actually not going to mix any hoisin sauce or sriracha in here. It already has a lot of flavor in it. Look at that.
So today, I took Xena and Lucky to the vet. Because they needed to get their rabies shots. It's so funny. At first, Zena was really excited, even inside the vet. But usually when dogs go inside the vet, they know. They all get scared, put their little tails in. Lucky was really scared. And Zena was like, mm. But by the time we went in, she starts getting scared, right? And she starts hiding under the chair. It was like so cute. So cute. Whenever I take Xena in the car, she always comes to the middle and she leans on me. She was like, I'm like, Xena, move. And then she's like really strong. So she's like, nope, nope. This is my spot. It's so funny. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys because I thought it was like the cutest thing ever. If you guys have not tried the charbroiled pork pho, you guys really need to. I recommend it. It's like a 9 out of 10. Today, I wanted to ask you guys, what type of a person are you? What I'm trying to ask is, are you very independent or are you dependent? What type of a person are you? For me, I would say I'm pretty independent. Like, um, if there was a level of independentness, independentness, <laughs> I would be, so if this is the top, I'll be like right here. Growing up, I always wanted to be like my dad. And my dad had this like side laptop bag and I would ask him to get me one. And I was in elementary school, right? So I wouldn't wear a normal backpack like everyone else. I would wear like my dad's laptop bag. And like even clothes, if my dad wore a polo shirt, I would ask him to buy me a polo shirt. And my dad seriously thought that was like the cutest thing ever. So growing up, I observed my dad's every move and how he was like. My dad was really independent. Never in my life did I see him asking help for anything. Like I said, our family was the only one that you know, immigrated to the United States. And when we moved here, it was around the terrorist attack um, year. So visa, getting visa, green card, it was really strict. But somehow my dad managed to get us enrolled in for the green card and everything so we could live in the United States. Growing up watching him like that, I had this thing in my mind. Asking people for help is for the weak. It's for weak people. If you're strong, you don't ask for help. You do it on your own. That's what I thought. That was my mindset.
I don't know if you guys remember, but I started running errands since I was like six years old. Go buy stationery for my brother, go buy grocery for my mom. I did everything and I enjoyed doing it. I thought I was like an adult. I always quickly wanted to grow up as a kid. I wanted to become an adult really quickly. But enjoy your youth. Enjoy your young life. Anyways. So I was independent since I was young. Well, I think so. And I never asked anybody for help. Never. When someone asked me like, Oh, honey, do you want help with that? Like if I was holding something heavy, I'd be like, No, I can do it. I can do it on my own. And you know, I would be struggling, but I did it on my own because I was like, No, no, I can do it. I can do it. Go away. You know? I was like that. My dad thought that was so funny. I'm actually still like that in a way, but I've grown to learn to ask for help. Because I learned that, you know, we're here to help each other. We're here to help one another. We don't live in this world by ourselves, right? And I think I learned that because I started volunteering. And now that I have a sponsored child, I know that there's people that need my help. And there's going to be times where I'm going to need someone else's help. And that kind of absorbed into my mind after volunteering and helping others. So I've learned to accept that it's okay to ask people for help. Let me give you an example of how bad it was that I wouldn't ask anyone for help, especially my friends or family. I never wanted to show weakness. So before I moved to this house, when I moved, I had a boyfriend at the time, so he would help me. But when I moved to this house, I didn't have a boyfriend at the time. And you know, normally when you move, you could ask your friends for help or your family for help, right? Or hire a moving company. But I thought I could do it all on my own because I didn't have much furniture because I threw everything out. So what I did when I moved to this house is crazy. I would put a bunch of my clothes in... Uh, luggage, luggages, and I would go back and forth, go back and forth um, until, you know, I would take the clothes out, bring it back, and then do all the small stuff first on my own with my own car. Can you guys imagine? I think I came back and forth around maybe like seven times at least. And then, I thought I 
I could just do that. But there were a few boxes that were too big, so I needed to rent a U-Haul. A truck. So, I rented a truck. It's pretty big. Like, you know those U-Haul trucks, right? I rented a truck, drove that all by myself, put all the boxes in, drove that for 40 minutes. Can you guys imagine? Me, little honey, driving this huge U-Haul truck. Didn't ask anybody for help. I sometimes can't believe I did that all on my own. If I think about it now. It's a miracle. And what else I realized is that now that I'm getting older, I do have a little bit of joint problems. Like my knees crack every time I move. Sometimes it doesn't, but sometimes it does. And I was in Japan and they don't really have escalators going up and down the subway station. And I was struggling. It hurt so much. And I could feel like the pain that the elderly go through with their joint problems. And sometimes, you know, they need help with the wheelchairs and stuff. And I was thinking, like, dang, what if I can't use my knees soon and I need someone's help? And I don't know how to ask people for help. That's when I realized I need to start learning to ask people for help. It doesn't hurt you. It, you know, it's not showing that you're weak. You just sometimes need people's help. As I believe sharing is caring, I think helping is caring as well. Helping one another. So my motto is sharing is caring and helping is caring. Now. think it's bad to be too independent or do you guys think it's okay There were times I wanted to help people and I asked them if they needed help, but they said no. And it looked like they were really struggling, especially with like holding heavy things and stuff. And I'm pretty strong for a girl. I'm pretty strong. Do I see that? Macho, macho, honey. <laughs> but, um... You know, when they say no, I feel bad because it looks like they are struggling, but they just don't want to ask, you know, for help like I used to be. But I just want to say, like, you know, sometimes it's okay to accept someone's offer or, you know, ask for help. It's time for 
my gosh. <gasps> there's bees everywhere. Buzz, 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 buzz. Look at it. Oh my gosh, it's a switch. It's a bee switch. <gasps> oh my gosh, Stephanie. Thank you so much. I'm going to put this as decoration, maybe on top of this couch. Wow. I'm like so surprised right now. I don't think I've been this surprised ever in my entire life. You guys, look. Can you guys see this? Oh, look at, oh my gosh. I'm gonna wear this later. Bee fan? You guys, I'm like sweating. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be perfect for my mukbangs. And I can dry my eyelashes here just in case it falls off, you know? This is amazing. Bee bracelet? I can't believe they have all these bee stuff. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Ooh, ooh. And here are the curry for the pokemon. Curry spicy noodles. I'm gonna eat this soon in my mukbang. Oh, there's one more. Three. Let's open this one. <gasps> wow, I've been looking for this and it was like sold out. It's the tortilla chip challenge. The Pucky, Pucky Tortilla Chip Challenge. Oh my gosh. Stephanie, now I have so many mukbangs to film thanks to you. And by the way, you guys, Stephanie also has a mukbang channel and it's Views on the Road. And I'm so glad I found her. Like, I seriously love her videos and her family is seriously hashtag family goals. So make sure you guys check her out too, okay? It's Views on the Road. Oh my gosh. What? Beer for dogs? Okay, here. Take that. He loves it, Stephanie. Look. Hot sauce. Stephanie, I'm gonna leave this right here and try it in one of my mukbang. Ooh, it says for tacos. Chilorio. <laughs> Am I saying it right? Chilorio. Shredded seasoned pork meat. I'm gonna have to eat some tacos in one of my mukbangs too. And I have to try this because I never tried it before. But it looks really delicious. So I'll put this right here. And then there's a book called The Alchemist. I've never read this. To realize one's destiny is a person's only obligation. By pa Paulo Coelho. Oh my gosh, I really needed a new book to read because I'm almost done reading one of my books. And my goal is to read 10 books by the end of this year. I'm on my third book. I know I'm really behind, but thank you so much for this book. And there are a few things left. And of course, honey and some cute little heart pins. Hair bows for dogs. I'm going to give this to Lucky or Xena. I can't wait for them to wear it. And then lastly, oh, it's a lunch box. This is so cute. Oh my gosh. Stephanie, this is seriously overwhelming and ugh, I feel the love from this box. I Really, thank you so much for taking the time to find all this and pack all of these for me. Thank you so much. And Zeno definitely loves his doll already. I'm gonna give the other dolls to Zena and Lucky. I have never been this surprised in my life and I can't wait to try all of this. I still have not tried the curry spicy fire noodle, so I'll be trying the ones that you got me. And I really have to try this too. Thank you so much. It's like, I don't know what to say. I'm so touched right now. I love it. I love it. I love it. Ooh, ooh. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And to become a honeybee. And like this video if you guys liked it. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!